now it's time for us to discuss start discussing the Czech perk a very interesting si sideline and in my opinion an opening that clearly deserves a lot more attention than it gets and um, well the position arises after such moves as e4 d6 d4 knight of 6 knight c3 and here as you know the normal perk would run g6 while the Philidor starts after the move e5 but in fact there is another move in this position as well which I think is very interesting namely the move pawn to c6 so um, let's talk a little bit about the ideas and let's try to understand uh, why do we want to play in this way well here's the deal for one um, let's look at for example the perk for a second normal proper perk here what has a bunch of continuations the thing is um, white can choose what type of position he wants to get if he wishes he can play very calmly knight f3 bishop e2 castling and so on if he likes to he can go f4 and go for the three, three pawn attack austrian attack if he wants to he can play f3 and then bishop e3 queen d2 long castling and try to checkmate black along the way White can also choose some other sidelines, such as say, he can play g3, which is what Karpov used to like a lot. And there is a very famous game between Karpov and Timon, which I strongly suggest you just study in case if you haven't yet. But generally, the issue is that um, White has way, way, way too many continuations. Now, as for the Philidor, in fact, I have a lot of respect for this opening from the philosophical perspective, so to speak. Yeah, however, um, again, white has quite a lot of possibilities. He can make it to the end game. Um, he can go for the middle game with knight f3. He can try to play, for example, knight e2 and then g3, bishop g2. He has some other continuations as well. But, yeah, generally, well, white is the one choosing the type of a game. But, in fact, the move c6, well, of course, it has its own disadvantages. And we'll talk about specifics. I'm not, you know, trying to present it to you as if it was the best opening out there, one that would win the game by force or something, of course not. But it's a very interesting continuation, because for example, if white goes knight f3, black can choose to go g6, bishop g7 and play it like perk, black can choose to go knight d7, e5 and play it like Philidor, and black can choose to, for example, throw his bishop out on g4, which is exactly what we will be doing. So as you can see, black has quite a bit of variety. And in fact, white really doesn't have all that many possibilities. Like white can go knight f3 here, white can go f4, and white can do other stuff such as say h3 or like bishop e2 or like I don't know bishop e3. But those moves are not particularly threatening because black keeps the options open of transposing either to Philidor or to the perk under the favorable terms. So in my opinion, this opening presents a great deal of flexibility. Now. Um, let's start with the most natural move, in my opinion, which is knight to f3. In fact, the move of 4 here is the most popular continuation, but we'll start with the move knight to f3. So here, as I said, black has a bunch of variety. He can go g6, looking to play the perk. And in fact, interestingly, I don't really think it is that bad at all. In fact, I think it's a very sensible idea, because now, in the perk, white lost possibilities to play f3 and to play f4, which are actually the most dangerous possibilities that white has. So here, well, you can argue that the move c6 was not really particularly needed. However, I see really nothing wrong about just going g6, and for example, after, say, bishop e2, bishop g7, castling, castling, let's say, a4, a normal perk move well you just got to play your perk like queen c7 e5 or like knight d7 and this is something you can toy with you have the variety you can try to play around and yeah i mean of course it's perk black is a little worse there is no doubt about that but he gets an interesting complicated position full of pieces where there is not that much theory not that much he needs to know move after move so it would be a perfect choice for a you know and um, club player who is just looking to get a game, who is just looking to have fun. Um, but our main focus here will be on the... And in fact, another interesting move, even though that's a little suspicious, is Queen A5. But that's just something I wanted to refer to, but not necessarily show you. Here's the main line, r line runs Bishop D3, and here Black can go E5, Black can go Bishop G4. Well, E5 is interesting, but generally I'm not such a huge fan of those positions. But the main move I wanted to present to you here is bishop to g4. Now, 
why it really has a plethora of continuations. And in fact, the move knight f3 is something that, um, in fact, this position, I think, is already something that many players would, might feel somewhat uncomfortable about, especially if they haven't studied it in a lot of detail, because as I said, black keeps a ton of, you know, transpositional possibilities. So imagine you go knight f3 is white and black plays g6 and you're in a perk. And what do you do if you play f4 versus perk, for example, you know? You have a problem, you don't know the arising positions. So, generally speaking, I personally consider the move knight f3 is a very cunning continuation, which is something that only very, you know, savvy players would go for, who actually know how to play precisely move after move, who have, you know, memorized, analyzed some sequences, or it will be played by players who just have no idea about what they are doing. Um, and you'll see what I mean very shortly. So now let's talk about the actual, you know, unique uh, ideas which are typical of the Czech perk. We'll go bishop g4, and I'll start by showing to you what happens if white simply, you know, slacks, so to speak, and plays some moves like, say, bishop e2, or like, you know, a4. Let's say it goes bishop e2. Here, the main idea is to play e6, followed by d5. So basically, we're playing some sort of a French defense or some sort of a Karakan with the bishop already outside. And what's interesting is that, for example, if white castles here and black plays d5, and let's say white goes e5 and black goes knight d7, well, in fact, the position is very similar to Karakan. Uh, for example, the classical Karakan arises after such moves as e4, c6, d4, d5, e5, bishop f5, knight f3, e6, bishop e2, for example, knight d7, castling. And as you can see, well, in our position, this knight is on d7, which is a little unusual. Unfortunately, now, for some reason, I cannot draw an arrow from this knight on g8 to d7, but you get what I'm talking about. And the bishop's already on g4, and the white knight is instead on c3. So, in fact, in many positions of this sort, well, the knight, for example, doesn't really want to be on c3. Because generally, white's ideas might include playing c4 at some point. Or they might include playing, for example, say, a4, a5, c3, b4, grabbing space. And often the knight goes to d2, either in order to come to b3, or possibly to come to f1 and then to e3, g3, or possibly to support this knight on f3. And when the knight goes to c3, in fact, white loses a lot, a ton of, you know, options. So it's not really clear what the knight entirely, exactly is doing there, because now white doesn't have any ideas related to the move c4, and the knight doesn't have anywhere to go to. So, in fact, well, of course, there's, you know, computer evaluations, there's, like, specific sequences, but I love looking at openings from the perspective of um, philosophy, you know, like, why, you know, what structure are we looking to get? What type of positions are we looking to obtain? What, yeah, like, what pieces we want to trade? Where our pieces want to be? And sometimes, in some openings, everything comes with some disadvantage, like, you know, you're missing a tempo or something, but I think it's super important to understand the philosophy behind some opening. Now, bishop g4, so bishop e2, e6, and here, for example, if white castles, and we go d5, we got this sort of position. And, in fact, well, this is, I think, a pretty decent way for white to play. Um, now he can make quite a lot of decisions. And in fact, I think a pretty uncomfortable thing for most white players is that they'll need to make decisions early on. For example, here. Do you wanna, let's say, play bishop d3 and get the French structure, or Karo structure? Or do you wanna play e5 and get some closed, like French Karo structure? Or do you wanna take on d5 and get some sort of Karo's bat structure or Karo can exchange structure? A lot of decisions, right? Now, for example, starting with the easiest of things, if let's say white takes on d5, okay, you can just take back, for example, cd5. And here, the thing is, well, you have some sort of Karakan or something, but your bishop already got out a very good square. And again, I really love comparisons. And if you compare, for example, this position to the normal Karakan, for example, the exchange Karakan, or let's say queen c7. <coughs> Sorry, my apologies. If you compare it, for example, to this line, well, here, white doesn't want you to be able to meet knight f3 with bishop g4. So he either goes h3, or he goes knight e2. 
intending to meet bishop g4 with possibly f3 at some point and then say knight f4, hunting your bishop on h5 or something. But in our case, as you can see, the bishop has already been able to get out. Now, um, so e d5 is not a problem, and after c d5, well, again, we can continue, let's continue, let's make some moves. We can play, for example, knight c6, let's say later bishop d6, castling, and later, for example, let's say white does something, we go bishop d6, let's say chop, chop. Later, the plan could be to go rook to b8, and then b5, b4, a5, and run the so-called pawn minority attack on the queen side. And in fact, um, such a position is very comfortable for black, not just due to the structure, but actually because the bishop is already outside of the pawn chain. And also this knight is very misplaced, it wants to be on d2 of course, not on not on c3, so that white can take back with the knight, so that white can play c3, so that maybe the knight can go to b3 and then to c5, so this is I think super convenient. And on the other hand, if white is to play e5, well this is I think the more challenging move, then we go knight d7, and here white again needs to make decisions. So in fact, um, I would like us to start with the game. And I personally think this is a sort of scenario you're very likely to run into in your games. For example, so this game continued bishop e3. Well, black played c5. Queen d2. Black played. And here, in fact, black missed an opportunity. So I think... Or not even missed an opportunity, but I think it makes sense to simply chop off this knight immediately. And after bishop f3, we can just go knight c6. And here, the entire center is already collapsing, and surprisingly, white is nearly lost. Like, for example, if white were to take, well, we just take on c5, let's say, takes, takes. And this pawn is super weak now, knight d7 is coming, the pawn's gonna fall. And in fact, having a bishop on f3 in such a position is absolutely terrible for many reasons. Well, for one, the bishop's not particularly useful overall, and secondly, it stops white from playing, let's say, pawn to f4. But white cannot easily fix the problem by going, let's say, bishop e2. Well, I mean, the pawn is hanging in all the lines. And maybe here, black needs to be cautious due to moves like queen e3, hitting knights, or like queen d4. But he can, for example, choose to castle first. And if white tries to play f4 to hold on, then after queen b6, now his position is going to fall apart due to all this sort of discovers, discovered attacks, you know, the pawns which are hanging and so on. So this is just terrible. So, um, this really doesn't work for white, and in fact, black chose to continue with the move knight c6, which is also fine, it just lets white kind of fix the situation a little bit. White took here, black took on f3, white took on f3, and black took on e5, and still, this wasn't a good position. I think that white should have, for example, retreated, and after, say, d4, well, I mean, the position collapses, or white could have gone, let's say, queen e2, and here d4 is not so clear, because white can take on c6 or play rook d1, but black could even just continue, like, bishop e7, castling. Later, the pawn's gonna be super weak after queen a5 or knight d7. The black has the center to himself completely, white's not in a position to challenge us in the center. So this is super convenient, and black is just much better. So in this game, white ended up playing um, rook to d1, and then black just took on f3, developed, castled, put the bishop on f6. And as you can see here, black simply dominating the position. The bishop's fantastic, much better than the white knight. The white king, in fact, is quite suspicious. The white structure on the king's side has been shattered. Due to the bishop on f6, there is no talking, there is no hope to ever be in a position for white to challenge the pawn on g7, or to attack over the g-file, this is not happening. Um, and um, finally, yeah, I mean, the pawn on c5 is also super weak, rook c8 is coming, maybe even b6 is coming if needed. Black can even choose to like take on c3 at some point, for example, if they white moved queen e2. I would strongly consider just bishop c3, giving white double pawns here, and triple pawns here. And of course, well, this is simply terrible. So, white played queen e3, and here, black continued queen c7, he didn't get to win this pawn right away, however, now all the other pawns are falling apart. And after, for example, a, not for example, a3, that's what was played, queen c2, well, black simply ended up, you know, just a pawn up with an overwhelming position and he converted. 
Now, you might wonder again, all these games I'm showing to you, like, where, you know, where did I find them? Like, what are these games? Who are the players? Did I find you a game of, I don't know, some, like, club player who just has no clue how the pieces move, or, I don't know, some, you know, beginner who was shown how to play yesterday? Because clearly White lost, you know, in a very bad way. And I don't really mean to, like, make fun, of course, of the White player or something. I just want to say that, well... Knowing the rating of a white player, you would know that you would agree that white could play much, much better. This was a very bad day for the white player. In fact, the white player here was rated over 2300 FIDE, a titled player. Well, black was nearly 2700. So, as you can see, for one, this opening, well, it clearly isn't, you know, the most bulletproof, the most sound opening in chess compared with Berlin or compared with Nidor or compared even with Karakan or French. However, it's a perfectly viable weapon. White can have a slight advantage maybe if he plays perfectly, but okay, so what? We are playing a game of chess. Uh, now, let's move on. So here, in fact, this is quite a critical position. And in fact, White can try to pose some problems to us if he knows what he is doing. As I promised you, most players will not know what they are doing here. They'll develop the bishop, and then after c5, knight c6, bishop e7, queen b6, we have this very, very standard position. Uh, which is kind of, you know, typical French, where the bishop's already outside of the pawn chain, already on g4, as opposed to being all the way back on c8, stuck and unhappy. So here, white can try to pose problems by playing such a direct move as knight g5, for example. And here, we're gonna take, take, and just play bishop e7 or h6, for example, h6. And in fact, in this position, the only game I'm aware of so the move knight takes on f7, which is of course incorrect, black can just take back. The only things after taking, black mishandled it, he went king e7, after which white continued, bishop g5, takes, takes, and this was a balanced position, where eventually black went on to win, pretty fast from now on, but there is no need to give white such a luxury, and in fact black can simply continue with the move king g8, and after for example, I don't know what white would even do, Black can just play knight a6 in order to connect the rook and the queen and later offer a trade is queen e8. Later, if needed, if white will be advancing here, well, black can go say knight a6. If f5, black can just offer a queen trade. Of course, white cannot accept. We're just gonna take, take and just play, for example, knight c7. Well, the knight or the queen are just gonna join the defense. Black will play bishop e7, king h7, rook f8. And this just looks like an extra piece to me. White is gonna lose. This is, of course, not going to do anything for white. So, um, here, white should continue with the move queen h5. But this is already, I believe, a novelty, actually. No one even played this way. And here, after uh, g6, queen h3, we need to be a little mindful of all the possible sorts of sacrifices. But this is not a problem, really. We can just go bishop e7. And here, uh, I believe that, uh, well, most players will just decide to go knight f3 or something. And here, after c5... Black just gets a great position, the center immediately gets under a lot of pressure. So, white here should find a move like f4. And he is not really afraid of hanging, the, of, you know, leaving the knight hanging at any point. But here, I actually see no problems. No sacrifices are really, threat are really threatened, something we need to worry about. Black can, for example, go queen b6, hit the pawn, taking advantage of the fact that bishop e3 would hang this pawn. So, for example, white would go knight e2. And then black can just go knight a6. And later, in fact, black can choose between several options. He can continue later with a long castling. Of course, he doesn't want to hang the pawn. He'll first deal with that problem. Uh, black can, in fact, continue with short castling. Black can continue with c5. Now, in fact, it's not easy for white to make a move. The knight cannot move due to the pawn. Um, sorry. The bishop cannot move due to the pawn in b2. Say if white made some move like c3. Black could go knight c7. For example, if white moves the knight somewhere, black could play c5. And as you can see, this whole deal, this whole thing, didn't really get particularly far. It's not like white had managed to make a tremendous amount of progress. So in fact, after deep analysis, I found something super exciting. Like here, for example, the computer says white can play knight f7 after a lot of analysis. And after taking f5, and after taking e6, and this is getting now the point is that like if king takes knight f4 and if king f7 knight g6 all the sacrifices continue and here after say queen d4 eventually it finds some like repetition of moves or a draw 
Well, first of all, black doesn't really need to go for it. Black could even go like king e8 and just give up this knight and establish his king on a safe spot and later go knight c7, knight e6. And black is a pawn up and his king is perfectly safe. He can just move the rook away and just, you know, hide the king if needed. So this is absolutely okay. And yeah, in fact, there's like a ton of very, very exciting complications I found here, which I was super excited about because, well, it's not really that often that you get to analyze such a fresh and explored positions, like position move 10, move 11, no games in the database, no clue what's happening and a, a ton of, you know, interesting complications. So I've had a ton of fun before I've started delivering this material to you. And I'm having some along the way as well. As I imagine <laughs> you would be quite surprised to see all that as well. So, yeah, so here, in fact, well, this queen h5 leads to a very interesting position, but black is fine. White can try some other things, like, for example, go knight e1, or something like this, but then black can simply take, take, for example, c5. And all these natural moves, of course, lead to a decent position. In fact, here, um, white can try to do something on the king side by means of, say, playing knight d3, f4. However, it's important to understand the following defensive resource. For example, after castling f4, it's worth knowing that black can try to play for f5. However, we're not gonna do this here. We're gonna first involve c4 to kick this knight out and possibly prevent it from coming to e5 if needed, at least sometime soon. And after, for example, knight e1, knight e1, we can play f6, which leads to a very interesting position. Or we can just make the move f5. And I actually think this is a perfectly, you know, reasonable position for black Imagine if the black bishop was on c8 and say the white bishop was on c2. Well, this bishop could be used for an attack and this bishop would be absolutely stuck. It would be obstructing the coordination between the pieces and it would be, of course, clear that you know it. An absolutely redundant piece which black would dream of getting rid of. Now, though, we managed to get rid of the bishop. So now, even though we have a little less space, we don't have a space disadvantage because, obviously, um, all the black pieces have very good spots. Later you can choose to play b5, a5, b4, possibly a4, a3, bring your rook over, or maybe just play with this rook and use this one for defense. And in fact this position, the computer tends to favor white slightly, but I would have personally absolutely no concerns playing it in a practical game, because it clearly feels like black has a ton of counter play, and the position is super interesting, the position is very fighting. So this is, I think, perfectly okay. Now, moving on. So this position is something we've more or less discussed. Like, why can try to play something else like h3? Okay, here. I don't think you want to take, actually, because... In, in, actually, there's a very interesting idea here, which I found. So one game, so bishop f3. And here, it's, it seems natural to go c5. And it looks like the white center is again under pressure. However, somehow black's not very well developed, and white has actually a very interesting idea here. Actually, I would encourage you strongly to stop the video and think what white can do, what sort of ideas come up to mind when you look at it as white. 